Understanding Money and Inflation, Part 1. What is money? Almost everything we do involves money. Some of our earliest experiences revolve around the spending of money. Arithmetic, history, social studies, athletics, cafeteria, entertainment. Almost every school subject and activity involves money in some way. Money is created by our government, as specified in the Constitution, to coin money and regulate the value thereof. Therefore, it is impossible to discuss money and not create differences of opinion about how legislative bodies should manage our money supply. Politicians running for office talk more about money and taxes than about anything else. There may be several right answers to the nation's economic problems, but without a knowledge of the nature and function of money, it is difficult to evaluate the proposals expounded by economists and politicians. In most cases, you cannot vote intelligently unless you understand what you read, see, and hear about money. This program set is designed to help you understand the importance of money in our lives and how it should be managed. You'll find that economists and politicians have vast differences of opinion, even when working with the same facts. Don't be afraid to form opinions of your own. Your solution may be just as good as the author's, and as a result of your study, you may discover a solution superior to the ones presented. And so, let us begin by considering what is money. Money is a mysterious substance. You can't eat it. You can't wear it. It can't be used for shelter. You can't take it with you. Everyone wants it. Yet, it is completely worthless until you get rid of it. It serves no purpose until it is spent or until it is saved for future use by lending it to someone else who will spend it. Great civilizations have existed without money. The ancient Egyptians, for example, did not use money, but their social structure made this possible. The modern world could not exist without this complex medium of exchange which we use in the form of bills, coins and checking accounts. In modern life, money has become the most important tool we use. In modern usage, money becomes an instrument of credit. In this electronic age, with the use of computers, money may be nothing more than signals sent over wires or through the air and recorded as figures on a bank statement. Still, money is worthless without something to buy or if others will not accept it for goods and services. You can starve to death with a million dollars if there is no food to buy. A lack of understanding about the nature of money and how it functions has led nations to near catastrophe time after time. A detailed study of money is extremely complex, but just as it is unnecessary to understand everything about an automobile to learn to drive, it is not necessary to take a college course in economics to learn a few simple facts about money and how it should be used. Most students leave school with only a smattering of knowledge concerning the nature and function of money. A child's definition of money, it's what you use to buy things with, is as good as any. Usually we think of money as coins and paper bills, but it can be checks, or anything else that people will readily accept for goods and services. Coins, according to Herodotus, were first made by the kings of Lydia in the latter part of the 8th century BC. We can carry limited amounts of coins and bills in our pockets or purses. We call this convenience money, and it permits us to make small purchases and to make change. The nation's major business is conducted with checkbook money. Credit cards and checks make it possible to make large purchases without carrying a suitcase full of coins and bills. For more than 4,000 years, money meant coins of gold, silver, copper, bronze, or even iron. 
Gold and silver have now become so valuable that they are seldom used in modern day coinage. Alloys of various metals and aluminum are now used. These coins are more durable and not subject to melting for their raw materials.